Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Catalog and Cocktails. We have a very special episode set up for y'all today, which we're very, very excited about. And we'll introduce all our guests in a second here. Um, but we wanted to start off by saying, hey, uh, you know, this is a, uh, a recorded session. If you, if you want to uh, turn off your screens and mute yourself for the first 30 minutes, please do. But then for the last 30 minutes, we're, we're going to unmute, we're going to turn on our videos, and we're all going to kind of hang out. Uh, and so, hey, this is Catalog and Cocktails. It's an honest, no BS, non-salesy conversation about data uh, with tasty beverages in hand. I'm Tim Gasper, Director of Product at Data.World. And my co-host is Juan. Juan, do you want to introduce yourself and, and also kind of pass over to our guests? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Juan Cicada, the principal scientist here at Data.World. And if, uh, you're, if, you, uh, if you're a regular an attendee, you realize that I'm in a different place today. I'm excited. I'm in my new bar. One of the things coming out of COVID or from COVID is that I've been spending my time not flying, but I've built a bar. So this is going to be my new, uh, my new, my new area, probably hosting this. And I am super excited uh, to have this, to this episode because we're going to have the authors of the book, Semantic Web for the Working Ontologist. Uh, we have all the authors. So we have Dean Alamang, uh, Jim Hendler, and Fabian Gandon. Uh, all of you guys. Dean, how about you kick it off and introduce yourself? Hi, uh, well, I'm Dean Alamang. Um, I think a lot of the folks here know me. I've been uh, doing semantic web stuff uh, for a while. And uh, in the first edition of Semantic Web for the Working Ontologist, uh, I uh, learned everything that uh, Jim Hendler could tell me about it, wrote it all down. And uh, here's uh, yeah, it, it's now our, our third edition is, is coming out. And one of the things that has always um, bothered me about the, the first couple of editions is that we had all these data sets and all these queries and all these examples and we didn't have a way to get just easily host them all and have everything uh, people come and give them a try and that's uh, you know to my mind the biggest innovation in the third edition is that now anybody who wants to can do that well how about here next to my skin I see Jim Howdy. I've been doing semantic web probably even longer than Dean has. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else here? I think. Um, yeah, I, th I, th I think you're going to you're going to take the prize, Jim. <laughs> yeah, for, for those who don't know, the, the, the seminal paper on semantic web and the Scientific American uh, is authored by Jim Hendler, also Claude with one or two other people. With one or two other people, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's a pleasure to be here all, and it was great. Finally getting, you know, Dean and I for a long time were putting off doing a third edition. We kind of needed two things. One was someone else to join us, which we'll get to in a minute. But the other thing was really enough new cool progress stuff happening. And we really felt the past two or three years, a lot's been going on. You guys were a piece of it. So it was, it's great doing this as our initial pickoff. Awesome. And we also have uh, Fabian. Hi, I'm, I'm Fabian. I'm really happy to uh, join Dean and uh, Jim for this third edition. Uh, so I think I wrote my first triple, RDF triple in 1999, uh, huh? while RDF was the first recommendation and RDFS was not a recommendation yet. And, um, and I was really happy to join the uh, Dean and, and Jim, uh, especially to work on uh, the linked data uh, chapter that has been added to this new edition. All right, Very so exciting. question for everybody, right? What are you guys drinking? I'm gonna start off, I'm drinking uh, just a little bit of rum straight, El Dorado, 15 years. It's a rum from Guyana, which I'm really enjoying lately. So I've decided to do a, a classic margarita. I'm not a big uh, cocktail fan, but margaritas are one of the cocktails that I like with lots and lots and lots of salt, as I'm, I'm a big salt fiend. And uh, so that, that's my cocktail tonight. Nice, that's a fancy looking cocktail glass. Yeah, I got that at a second-hand shop. It cost me 75 cents. It's like, you know, <laughs> you can't, can't beat that. So I, uh, I, I had to travel out of town for the first time yesterday in a long time. Drove five hours, had a 10-minute meeting, and drove five hours back. So <laughs> I'm drinking wow. Coke to stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you're, you're joining us from the other side of the ocean. So I, I, hopefully you're... you're 
Are you so, winding yeah. down or ready to go to bed? <laughs> no, as, as a French guy, I, I feel like I should be defending some French wine, but unfortunately it's 11 p.m. here and I don't drink alcohol, so I will stick with a uh, herbal tea. <laughs> All right, well, when we also have, uh, I don't want to forget about our co our co-founder of Data World, uh, Brian Jacob. Uh, he's going to, uh, there's an interesting story behind all of this, and I'm going to kick it off with that. But Brian, how are you doing? Sure, great. Thanks for introducing me, Juan. Yes, I, I think I know most people here as well. And uh, you know, like Juan said, Dean, Dean's been an advisor of the company from, from from pretty much since there's been a company. So there's a and there's a story kind of tying into the book around that. Um, I'm drinking uh, a rye mule, so rye whiskey, ginger beer, and lime. Nice. So let's start off. Can you, so this is the third edition of the book. Um, why a third edition? Like, why is this now the time? Uh, I mean, Jim, you said well, second edition was enough, and usually you don't see a lot of uh, books coming out in, in a third edition. Yeah. Why, why now? It seems to me that, that uh, yeah, the third edition of a technical book is actually pretty unusual anyway. So it's, it's, it's kind of as a testament to uh, how I think uh, Semantic Web is coming into its own um, about now. And you know, part of it's the interest around uh, knowledge graphs and graph data and so on. But honestly, we made the decision before you know, Gartner was saying that uh, you know, knowledge graphs are back going you know, well, they're back into the trough of despondency again. But um, we really... Uh, we're sort of gathering up momentum with things like Shackle, things like linked data, uh, things like uh, advances in schema.org. Yeah, schema.org is actually more recent than the second edition. Um, and in some sense, so is Sparkle. So, uh, but during the uh, third edition editing, we realized that there are actually things in the second edition about Sparkle that did not make it into the standard. So there was kind of just this, this growing groundswell. Um, but as uh, Jim alluded to, the, the real uh, straw that broke the camel's back, as it were, was uh, Fabian coming in and uh, saying that uh, he felt that a sort of a linked data aspect of this was really lacking in the first two editions. And he was, of course, correct and uh, joining us for that. And that's, I think that's kind of, um, it, there's no particular note of, event that makes it why now it was kind of a culmination of things sort of growing up and saying okay um the iron is hot let's strike and one of the things i've always liked about um this book and especially the the title working mm -hmm. for me it's um there's this balance between all the kind of the books around semantic web being very academic and then things being very practical or working here and i think there's these like red flags. I, I mean, we should acknowledge that in the past there's these red flags from the industry about semantic web, but I think that has been shaped, that has been shifting, and it's something now uh, kind of well uh, starting to be adopted. Um, Dean, you're all what you've been working with so many people for the last decades around this. How yeah. how have you seen the shift here? And and I think that if we can talk a little bit about the academic and the real world and in the real world. Yeah, okay. So, you know, one of the things that was disappointing, and this is now speaking quite personally here, in my own career, in doing things like artificial intelligence and stuff like that, I would look at you know, my colleagues who did things like you know, databases and networking, which seemed you know, a lot less dramatic, but they were actually getting things done. Like the web was an innovation in networking that turned into an innovation in so many other things. And it, it seemed that a, a lot of the things I worked on weren't really getting into use. And when I saw the semantic web uh, very early on, you know, about the same time that uh, Fabian was saying he wrote his first triple, I was like, well, this is actually pretty down to earth and pretty you know, real in comparison to a lot of stuff that I had done before. And I thought, yeah, this you could make into something genuine. I was kind of surprised to find that even that uh, struck a lot of people in industry as being quite academic. I thought, well, for crying out loud, this is a distributed network of data based upon the exactly the same foundations as the web. And don't tell me you don't use the web. Uh, you know, this is as real as it gets. Now, here we are 20 years later, and interestingly, that same message is still pertinent. In fact, just yesterday, I had a meeting in a very large bank with someone who has really recently been bitten by the semantic web bug and he even mentioned that he was teaching his grandmother to suck eggs to to say this to me but he's talking about wow the, the bank's data can actually be a distributed resource it doesn't have to sit in one place we can use the technologies of the web it's like you know 
I'm not even going to take credit for saying that early on. I mean, Tim Berners-Lee, Jim will tell us how long he's been saying that, but it's been longer you know, even than Jim has. And so this is an old, old idea. And to my mind, the semantic web was always a working entity. And we were, we were working with it from the very beginning. Now, in terms of actually watching the, uh, the industry change, because you know, now I've got any number of customers who have semantic web applications working in production in real industries. You know, I, I, I can list a bunch of them, and you can follow me around conferences where I talk about this stuff in banking, in media, in pharmaceuticals. You know, this, this is genuinely real stuff. And one of the choices of putting that subtitle in really was that both Jim and I at the time were saying, you know, th this is coming out of academia and research, but this is real stuff. And um, that, that's why we made that choice. And in some sense, I think the choice has been a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, the people that the book attracts are people who are interested in that difference. And then they start to actually doing, do the real work and that makes it happen. And, but certainly in recent years, it now, you know, I, my dance card is, is completely booked and I know yours is as well. Um, there's a lot of work to be done out here and um, you know, I, I don't wanna do it all. I wanna teach other people to do it and hence the, you know, a third edition. No, so, so th thanks for that background. And I think one of the things that uh, we've been seeing here at data.world is we, the whole platform that data.world did was built on this entire technology. And I think that's how Brian realized it early on. I think that's how I see the, the dots being connected. Uh, Brian, uh, there's great stories behind how, how you figured this out, right? Uh, can you please illuminate us? Sure. I mean, I mean, the story is, you know, it, it, it's actually, you know, just uh, it, it's 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 fairly simple. But I mean, you know, they, you know, when we were kind of early coming up with the ideas for Data World, you know, I think you know, it was a, a, a core, you know, foundational idea. And it was this was the right tech stack to build a metadata management solution on, right? This, is, you know, for all the reasons Dean just said, I won't repeat it. Like, yes to everything everything Dean just said. Um, and, you know, we knew that we wanted to build a platform based on this tech in order to have it be able to kind of scale, scale to the future. I think, you know, one thing that we've said a bunch of times here is like, you know, any solution for enterprise management at scale ends up being isomorphic to RDF and RDF already exists. So that's going to be what wins. I mean, and, you know, there, there's, you know, we, we all know the kind of resistance and the friction to that. And then that's all real and you have to work through it. But from the early days, we're like, you know, like, like that, that, that's, that's, that's the mentality we've had since the beginning is like, eventually this kind of has to win because nothing else that's any fundamentally different could work. And so building a platform on this and then thinking about that in terms of like, how do you make that more understandable to, to you know, kind of mainstream data workers, kind of, kind of all the points you said. So like how, 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 you know, this book is really important to the history of the company and, you know, and, and how it got Dean involved. It's just, it's actually quite simple. You know, I've been a, I didn't write my first triple in 1999. It was probably, a, it was probably a few years later. And even then kind of only as just an interested kind of, you know, student, you know, like, like tracking along with this technology, being a fan of it from afar, but, you know, never really getting to employ it at scale because everywhere I was working was very, you know, kind of, you know, very mainstream ideas, all that same resistance. Um, and so, you know, I, I wrote a lot of, you know, did a lot with RDF and, and in, in, in by, along the side. I'd gotten this book at one point to read it, to learn. And so when we decided we were really going to start this company and spin up like this, I was just like, you know, I'm, I, I know, I now I'm pretty wired into this community the semantic web community. And I know a lot of the people, but I didn't then, and none of us really did. And so one of the first phone calls we made was just, you know, we I reached, you know, reached out to Dean as, as one of the authors on this book and said, Hey, we'd like to get to know you and ask you some questions. We're thinking about starting this company and, it, you know, a big fan of your book and your work and, you know, met Dean, hit it off well, kind of had a very similar philosophical approach to this. And so, you know, brought him into the fold as an advisor to the company. You know, again, before we had, I think before we had even really officially founded the company. Yeah, or, yeah or you weren't a company yet. Well, yeah. and actually <laughs> from, from my point of view, and when, when I would talk, talk to Jim about Tim Berners-Lee's original vision, you know, you're going to take this thing that's the web and turn it into the thing for data. Uh, well, there's, of course, the issue there that you've got some infrastructural problems. You, you can't just go to a GoDaddy and put together your, your, your data endpoint. Although that idea, I remember the, um, the original CEO of Franz, the folks who make Allegro Graph, uh, co coming up to me with that idea as early as 
gosh, 2002 or something like that. Um, and think, well, what, what would it take to do that? And I remember at the time thinking, well, that's just crazy. There's no way one company could possibly do that. Uh, but there, there was still this infrastructural issue that you couldn't do with your data what GoDaddy lets you do with your HTML. And that was going to be a real sticking point to having this thing grow. And so when Brian, now that time that he called me up or emailed me, or however it was our first uh, thing was, I thought, my God, these are folks, these, these people are crazy enough that they're actually going to give, uh, give a real honest college try to being able to host this stuff. And that's going to be a huge game changer. And one of the things that Brian and I do in, in, our, in our discussions is that um, I work very hard to keep them honest. Because uh, you know, when things in data.world go in a direction that sort of is not conducive to, to this particular mission, I'll say, well, it's very, I, I understand you're doing that and you need to, to make some money here, but keep in mind that you're the reason that data.world is so interesting from my point of view is that it becomes this catalyst for the big vision. That is what you know, got me so excited about this in the first place, you know, and made yeah. me sit the gym for all those hours and weeks back in whenever that was Jim. You know, I came up to uh, to Albany one time and we got away. how many different places did we have our big meetings and putting this for thing sure. together. We did it out in, we did it, did it out, in uh, out in uh West Stockbridge. Right, right. Yes, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. Um, and we had a couple of them in, in Maryland, I think early on. I mean the, the, the book was actually born to my mind in a hotel bar in College Park, Maryland. Do you remember this, Jim? I had been doing the, this course that we were doing the Top Quadrant. And at the end of the course, the course went really well. And everyone in the room was really interested and really engaged. In fact, every last one of them eventually became a customer of Top Quadrants at some point. And in the very last session, I had some spare time. And so I asked a couple of simple RDFS questions just to see whether the students could you know, think laterally and not one of them could do it, not one. And I met Jim for drinks afterwards and said, you know, I really wish that I could hand them something right now. You know, they've, they've been through four days of training, they've seen it all, they're not, but they're not gonna remember it. Something they can take home that goes through all of these details, telling stories, giving examples to let them go through it all again and slide where isn't good enough. I need, I really need, and Jim said, maybe it's time to write a book. And there we, yeah. and that to, that to my mind was the moment that we actually went from saying somebody ought to write a book to okay. it ought to be us. Yeah, we were I love that. teaching together at Top Quadrant and I would sort of come in and give the, you know, the big, the big name from DARPA guy or, you know, sort of academic, you know, shine and wave hands and say stuff that didn't make any sense and then dean would spend the next three and a half days actually explaining to them how this stuff worked oh. so it also seemed like that would work for a book too that we could kind of frame it as both what's exciting and what's real and the other thing is the book really has evolved based on use and i think the um you know there was a moment during the writing of this book where i actually sent mail to dean saying you know, Dean, I think we've really learned a hell of a lot since the last one. Yes. We, we both have been, you know, working with so many companies, so many people, so many folks who've really deployed this stuff that, you know, what were our things we argued for in the earlier editions were this time we were able to say, here's how it works. Here's how to do it. Here's yeah, not we think you can do this. We can say, here's how we have done this. At, uh, and then it really, really makes makes it quite a lot stronger. And five yeah. Yeah, and, and not much. We're bringing Fabian in, of course, because he brings in a a, a very uh, different perspective that complements it so well. And it's like you know, here's here's somebody coming in from a strong web science background, and uh, so I, I come in from an enterprise data background, and. Um, as, as do many people here, but uh, Fabian comes in with this really strong web science background, and that's you know, really if you're, if you're talking about the, the the big vision of the web can happen inside your enterprise, then you know that's really the, the the angle that you need to bring in. And so Fabian did a great job with that. Yeah, and and that's actually a really great segue because I think one of the topics that that we're really interested in that um, 
that I think y'all are, are probably have a really amazing perspective on is, you know, how this book has started to become applied in affecting enterprise data, you know? Um, and, you know, very curious uh, from y'all's perspective, you know, um, the how you think of some of the barriers in enterprise data and how sort of web and semantics and, uh, and, and this book even specifically is starting to change some of that, um, that approach and that, that, that mentality. Well, there's a lot to say about that. And I, 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 I um, sat in on a webinar this afternoon uh, from my uh, friend and colleague, Dave McComb. And as you know, and so I'll plug somebody else's book. He has a book that's called something like Data Centric Enterprise, or I forget the exact title of it. Uh, but he has this thing he's been pushing about data centrism. And it was, it was his, his talk today was uh, quite insightful in that he's taking, again, this idea of the web and, and running with it where you, know, you put the, the, the data at the center and you're really thinking about your enterprise data in a completely different way. Rather than the applications driving it, each one of them having their own little data, you let the data drive it and the application uh, they're, they're, they're sort of the secondary things around the edge. And of course, the real key to scalability here, and we're seeing this more and more in, in different enterprises, the key to this is to realize that even though it's, you're, you're talking intramurally, that your data is distributed. That, oh, I don't need to distribute my data. It's all sitting inside my walls. I've got it all in my hands. Well, actually, you don't. Um, you know, if you take a, a large bank, well, Bank of America is a good example that I like. Bank of America... I, I never opened an account there. I have an account there. I opened an account at a bank that was bought by 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 Bank of America. If there are only two at each of those things, there's 32 banks in there. By the way, they merged with Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner, and Smith as well. How many banks are there? You, you, you literally hear banks talking about their thousands of databases, their millions of columns, their hundreds of thousands of tables that they need to manage. They're, they're as massively distributed as you can imagine, and they need an incremental modeling approach to what they're doing. And I've sort of lost track of your question now, Tim, but I think I'm, <laughs> I don't, I'm still online. Maybe it's the, the tequila. Um, but this, this is the sort of thing that I think we're seeing more and more is that people are realizing that you know, even in less obvious places that their data is distributed and that viewing it as a web is the key to scalability. Um, you, know, you, you can, sure, you can build yet another fabric, yet another um, warehouse, yet another lake, but there's always going to be something around the corner. And the, yeah. one of the most gratifying things that happened to me at one of the banks I was at yeah, because I was a consultant, after a certain amount of time, you're not allowed to stay without becoming an, empl an employee. And I had been going off to other projects. And when I came back, at the very end of my time, my boss brought me back basically just you know, to take me out to dinner and, you know, to, to, because at the end, I had a few hours to, to kill. But I, I looked at the, the um, folder where we had the extensions to the model that went out to lines of business. And when I'd left, there had been two of them, and we had done both of them as examples to show how it could be done. After the summer, after four months, there were 14 of them. And I went to my colleagues and said, boy, you've been busy with doing mappings, mapping the ontology to all these lines of business. They said, well, no, we haven't been doing that at all. Well, okay, but well, who has? Well, the lines of business did that. We set up a model that was sufficiently – uh, central to the, the the business, and we had a really good tech writer who wrote up the documentation, and the lines of business were motivated to join in, and so they did it themselves. And that is is the real success story, right? That you're you're you actually just that's the same thing that the web happens. Gee, who wrote all those web pages? I'm not going to write all those web pages. No, you're not. The people who need the web pages write the web pages. That's exactly what happened in the bank, and that's a pretty old story. It's like uh, 2012. And it's just happening more and more in, in different industries and different enterprises. I mean, that's, that's really incredible. And that, I mean, what I'm kind of hearing is some meta themes here uh, in terms of barriers are it kind of, you first mentioned kind of in, integration and inter interoperability kind of being mm -hmm. one big thing, which is happening at, you know, ma major sprawl and some of the larger, especially financial institutions and things like that. Uh, scalability and performance sort of being able to really handle large, not just data, but particularly connected data, connected concepts. Uh, and then it also sounds like you're talking about participation, right? Actually being do, uh, able to involve a much broader set of people in the, in the conversation. That's right. And then I think that that third one is really, you know, when you look at the web, you know, why is the web the, the largest information system in the history of, of our species? And it's, it's exactly that, it's participation. 
Uh, people compare the, the web to the Gutenberg press, but in some sense, it's really a lot more important than that because the, the press still meant that information was controlled by a small group. And now the idea of the web is that you're actually opening that up and democratizing your, your data in a way that was, is really completely unprecedented. One of the things that I've been seeing and talking to a lot of folks in these large organizations is you want to be able to kind of uh, balance the centralization versus decentralization. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think the, the model that, we're, that I'm seeing over and over, I'd like to get your input on this, Dean, is you want to centralize kind of your core important metadata. And not, it's not all the metadata. It's a core one. Like you should not have to go redefine what is an, empl what is an employee or customer, what is an email. But then other things, you want to just go distribute them. And then at the end, as you were mentioning, it's like the lines of business will be in, it's in their interest to align their data uh, to the core metadata so they can be basically good citizens. So that's the way you decentralize things and everything gets connected. But you still want some centralization on the metadata side. Th that's how I'm, I've been talking to folks about this. Uh, I wonder, what do you think about that? Well, I guess I sort of see a tension. Well, and actually, I want to take a slight issue with something you said about uh, being a good citizen. Yes, it's good to be a good citizen, but this is not altruistic. This this is actually enlightened self-interest. You know, you're you're joining in because you get out of it more than you put in. But okay, uh, we're leaving that. Um, that. I see a sort of a tension there that you want to have certain things centralized, but part of the issue is that you know, they might not, they might already be distributed. You, know, you actually have competing metadata schemes in your, um, in your enterprise already. And one of the things that I like to uh, say about the semantic web standards, and here I'm talking about the higher level standards, RDFS and OWL even, and especially OWL, is that if you've already got competing metadata standards. In RDFS, you can treat everything as a resource and talk about it. In OWL, you can actually make very specific statements about how your notion of customer relates to my notion of customer. And you can, uh, to some extent, have your cake and eat it too. Yes, you want to centralize your metadata. Sometimes you can't always do it. So a, a metaphor I often use is that you start your enterprise off as a jungle and you might want to have a cathedral where there's lots of rules and there's a high priest that tells you what to do. But the fact of the matter is you're going to live most of your life in the jungle where you've got heaven knows what going on in your enterprise. And I see the semantic web as being your survival kit for the jungle. Now, you're going to be living in the jungle, but at least you can talk about how your metadata comes together. If you do centralize some metadata, you can talk about how that relates to your legacy systems and so on. Yes. So you can actually continue to survive on your way to whatever your, your idea of the Halcyon state is. I was just gonna, uh, yes. And if you've spent any time in enterprise data management, it's the jungle. I mean, we usually use we usually use less PC words than that to describe the you know, the, the state of things. I mean, it's, Dave, it's, Dave McComb had <laughs> a a had a child scribble on a page today, yeah. and said, "This is a graphic artist uh, interpretation of an enterprise data system." Of course, it was just a child squiggle covering the entire page. Well, and, and I haven't gotten I haven't gotten Dave's I have not read yet Dave's newest book, although I will as soon as I can. I, it comes up on my queue. But the first book that he wrote that was kind of precursor to that we, was the title of that book, which is fantastic, and I recommend everyone is Software Wasteland. And it's exactly this point, right? It's basically that, you know, the infrastructure of, you know, the infrastructure that most business runs on is just, you know, the hodgepodge. And like, you know, hodgepodge, it, it sounds like it's being very derogatory to, you know, it's like, this is what happens when a system evolves through the technology that we've had available to us over the last 20 years. And like, you know, this tech being based on the web is like, it's born in a world where it's like where, 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 where the goal is to have a completely distributed system with no central with 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 you know with with no need for a completely central control and still to be able to make sense of that and have it consistently work and that's exactly what you need to kind of address this to, to address this this wasteland that's accumulated from you know decades of siloed systems and just you know stockpiling data with no notion of what it means or how you're actually going to use it Hey, so as I always tell everybody, 30 minutes flies by. Yeah. yeah it, it flies by. So a couple of things. One, uh, there is a, I think we're going to share a discount code and you'll probably get an email yeah. to get a copy of the book. Uh, definitely highly, highly recommend this. And now that we've plugged Dave McCone's book, I highly recommend those two, like the software yeah. waste and the data center revolution. I, I, I'm, I'm telling every single person to go at least read the software waste because it really describes what the problem is. Um, mm -hmm. I always like to sum up with our, our takeaways. I, Tim, I think you have some takeaways. I got my takeaways. What are yours, Tim? 
Yeah, I, uh, first of all, I wrote down uh, enlightened self-interest. I love that phrase. I got to find more ways to use that. Uh, but uh, secondly, um, you know, I, I love the the sort of the focus on how integration, scalability, and participation can really be solved in a very meaningful way, and and especially, uh, you know, when we think about the you know the jungle metaphor, you know, it definitely seems like we're trying to move away from sort of. Uh, brittle systems to ones that have infinite scalability and i think mm -hmm. that, that that's that's a huge thing here and and yeah big fan of the book so very excited and and juan what about you my my, my takeaway is enterprise data is the jungle right you have to admit that and we need to enterprises need to consider their data as the web mm -hmm. and with that thank you all very much hopefully you'll stick around uh, for more q a here uh and we will see everybody next week Thank you.